Hi, this is Russ from the AUSERS blog and welcome to my show and tell of the GeForce Imposca 2. And uh, straight away you might think, wow, that's big. And it's big because the first cool new feature is I can change the size of it and my UI. And I just come here and the regular size is uh, this one. That's how you get it. And then they also have given me the option to go for a kind of slim fast version of it, which is the small UI, kind of short and stumpy, which is nice. And then as of course, as you saw when I started the video, I can then have this large kind of supersized version of the Imposca, which is really cool. And if any manufacturers are watching this and software developers, I like it that I can make it that big on my screen if I need to. And it's a great option that they've included. So that's very nice. Uh, show and tell as they say, rather than a uh, full blown review of all its features, that would take some time. So I'm gonna give you kind of show and tell of some of the sounds, some of the kind of highlights that I love, and then tell you what I think about it. And uh, if you're an Imposca to uh, newbie, then uh, I'll give you my recommendation about whether you should invest in it. And if you are a previous owner, I'll give you the same recommendation as well. Uh, I already owned the Imposca, so uh, this isn't new to me as a synth, uh, but I have to say it really is a new synth in the development that they've done in it. Uh, straight away, just looking over the interface, uh, two oscillators and they have pretty straightforward waveforms and then there's also some presets as well there of uh, different waveforms they've created that you can work from. And the nice feature as well is there's also, of course, two user waves that you can work with. And that means you can actually draw it a bit like a fair light. Uh, you can choose here uh, the different kind of harmonic waveforms. <laughs> And a nice feature is well, if I just hold that down for a second, I hold the Alt key and draw it like that by holding the Alt key down. Get quite, get quite creative there. And a new feature is you can do audio input. That means you can put audio through it and use uh, several parts of the section, such as the filters and stuff, to uh, do that with your regular audio in much the same way that Venom does it and some other synths do it. So very nice that you can now bring your audio through it and use the filter section and other parts of it. Uh, all fully explained in the manual when you get it. One small criticism I had when I first got it was I couldn't find where they'd put the manual, which was a bit ironic. So I emailed the guys over, and to be fair, Dave, uh, one of the owners there, was back to me in 10 minutes telling me where it was kept. It's in the documents section of a Mac, but he's thinking about uh, giving people the option uh, in a later update of where you put it, uh, because uh, I wasn't smart enough to figure out that the document for this product would probably be in my documents folder. Uh, perhaps you're smarter than me, but there we go. So let's have a listen to it, because it's got some really great sounds. So I'm going to come back up and uh, start with the factory default, which is this lovely fat pad. <laughs> What I do love about it is just some really, really good sounds that, that uh, have some lovely velocity work done on them as well. So, you can hear how rich it is. That bottom end. Very nice, that. In some ways, it seems very CS80, those kind of synths. And uh, they've done a lovely job of creating presets. So the first thing I will say, the presets, 95% of them are very usable, very usable. They did a great job on the presets. And uh, I was just playing with them and just really appreciating the work they've done. There's a number of way of going through them. If you're a Pro Tools user, then they're all obviously set up here in Pro Tools 
which is really nice and really easy to use. So I wanted to try out some bass sounds and I have to say, what I'd do is I'd come here and I'd hit that there, you know, to the bass section. Lots and lots of variation, and uh, there's not only that sort of sound. Excuse the squeak squeaking chair as I find my mouse. There's then the unison section, which has just got some real filth in it. If you want some big basses, then this is the synth. Very nice. And then of course we've got some, as I say, you've heard one of the pads already, some great arpeggios built in there as well. see some really good stuff. If you're a retro fan, if you're an 80s, 70s, 80s synth fan, then this is a really cool synth for you to have and to play with. Lots and lots of sounds. And as I say, there's some really cool stuff as well in terms of uh, some nice leads as well. Remind some of you, you older people like me, go with the graying hair. Some serious filth there. It really is a dirty little bugger, this synth. And uh, I have to say, really fantastic. Uh, it's a lovely section here. If you hit the panel, then we have full uh, delay and chorus that you can add to sounds. Uh, you have a browser section here. If you're using it in standalone rather than in your uh, host DAW and uh, that's a really quick way of finding stuff. One of the great sections as well is the chord section. Those of you doing dance music. Uh. And if you're on the other end of the spectrum and you want some really lovely uh, pad sounds, then some really rich stuff here.
lovely rising filter there. Of course, it's so powerful, then you could go in and change the attack on the uh, filter. Change the cue of the filter. And drive it harder. Change the attack of the envelope of uh, the amplitude. Bring some noise in as well. want some more control then we could come over to the CC section and map a CC controller something like the uh, the frequency here we could hit that button just grab a controller on my synth here and it's mapped now let's go back out now back to where we are So you can see it doesn't take long to start to build something new. Very nice. So that's a very quick overview, a kind of show and tell of this new synth. It's not really a review, uh, but what would I say to those of you considering it? Well, if you already own Oscar 1, although it's called Oscar rather than Oscar 1, then it's a no-brainer. Uh, it's an upgrade of, I think, about, uh, I think, let's just check what I paid for it. Yeah, I paid, what, 70 euros for an upgrade of a synth of this quality. Now, it's a no-brainer if you've got it, do it. And if you haven't already got it, then I'd say recommend you do a serious uh, look at this. Uh, there's a Mac only at the moment download. Uh, the PC one's coming soon, apparently, and of a demo, so you can download it. It has noise bursts in it, which can get a bit uh, annoying after a bit, uh, which inspired me to buy it. Good for them. Well done. That was a good uh, move on their part. But I have to say, I love it. It's a great synth. It's a welcome addition to your synth arsenal. And you know what? Although this isn't a full review, I'm going to give it my Editor's Choice Award because they're great guys that do it. It's a great synth. It's got some brilliant presets. It's got some great features. And uh, you won't be wasting your money if you buy it. I've paid for it, and I feel it's great value for money. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.